I find this EGFR thing so completely fascinating because it's taught us so much. You know, this the T790M was, I think, described in 2005, like a year after the original description, but it's taken us quite a long time to kind of get an effective drug. We Now we have osimertinib, and, mm -hmm. and um, we um, know that uh, I think the uh, package insert response rate is 66% or something like that, durable right. responses, and very impressive waterfall plots. Uh, but until recently, we didn't have randomized data. I mean, in the old days, we would resist going to chemotherapy as the next step. But now we have data. Right. Val, do you know something about that data? Sure. So, you know, the impressive thing about this data that I reported at the meeting in Vienna recently, Aura 3, randomized data that pretty much recapitulates everything else we knew in Aura 1 and Aura 2, the first two studies where the drug was given without a control uh, in a phase 1 and a phase 2 expanded cohort. That doesn't happen very frequently yeah. in oncology where you see the same response rate, the same progression-free survival being recapitulated. Our history is as yeah. most positive phase 2s yes. are negative That's in phase right. 3. Yeah. That's right. So that speaks to the validity of the original data, but also speaks to how the drug is useful for the patients. It proves really the value of the drug as an addition to the armamentarium for the T790M patients. Of course, the rest of the patients that have other resistance mechanisms are still not being addressed with this. But the data was impressive. There was a high difference in progression-free survival favoring osimertinib, um, 10 to 11 months, depending on who was doing the review, central review or investigator review. And this was against standard platinum-based Versus doublets. about yeah. 4.4 4. 4 months for the platinum pemetrexid standard is, chemotherapy. Which is the standard going rate. That's that. right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and the hazard ratio was just very impressive was 0.3 response rate 71 percent for osimertinib in this phase three data which is really um, the same mirror image of all the other data that we have seen and of course the side effect profile favors osimertinib in this population it's easier to take a pill it's much less toxic people don't have to worry about the side effects related to chemotherapy so I think that really establishes the role of the drug and opens the door now for more investigation of other resistance mechanisms and also opens the door and the question, what happens after Simertinib, right. which will be the next generation of trials. Right. Do we understand yet uh, enough about resistance mechanisms to osimertinib? I mean, there have been a few things right. around, but no, no, no T790M story yet, right? Is that C797? Yeah, but do, I don't know how much we know about that right. yet. Yet. We we have some knowledge of what is the uh, frequency of alterations that we can see, but not a large population. Actually, this clinical trial or three has systematic collection Rebound, of data yeah, yeah. from patients that progress on the drug, and that would represent maybe one of the largest yeah, databases. Very, very to right, and rebiopsy is important because the C797S mutation of present, but you lose T790, they can re-respond to first generation mm -hmm. EGFR TKI. Right. So you want to know when they mm -hmm. progress in osimertinib if there is something you can take an action on.